first of all, I want to say, uh, say that I'm very, very happy to be here. I've been so many times in New York and played, but it's the first time I'm in this beautiful museum, and I'm really very, very glad for that. And um, I would also like to say some words about this project. Uh, you saw the movie, and what makes it rather unique or very important for Ukraine, at least. Uh, you know, there is, if there is, Ukrainian music does not exist in a professional world. If you look at all um, Philharmonic concert houses in Europe, and I suspect <coughs> strongly that it's uh, the same in the United States, uh, you don't find Ukrainian music. It's, it's like, you know, never existed. And I always felt that it's unfair, and I always felt that um, it's, it's not because that Ukrainian music is unknown, not because of, it, of uh, its worth value or uh, something like that, it's just because of the historical reasons. And uh, I thought that I at least can do something, because I'm in this small world of classical music, to, to um, bring attention of, uh, of uh, people, professional people in this world to uh, this music. And I had, um, um, it, there are many artists, uh, Ukrainian musicians, who record Ukrainian music by themselves and then edit by themselves. But if you look in a catalog, in a big recording companies, you will not find anything. So I went to one of the biggest recording company in Europe and one of those well-renowned, uh, Beast Record, and uh, I asked them if they think it would be possible to record Ukrainian music. You can imagine they looked at me like a little bit crazy. But what are you talking about? Who will listen to this? Who will, who will buy it? Like record Mozart and be happy and everybody will be happy. Uh, but I'm a persistent person, so I went again and it took me one year approximately. Mm. Probably they just gave up because they were tired of me. <laughs> but in, in, in any case, I will never forget the first uh, recording session. And their reaction, because you know, I'm a Ukrainian, I'm actually half Ukrainian, but my heart is Ukrainian, and I'm not objective, I am aware of that. And I was not objective with the value in this music, so for me it was very important their reaction, and their reaction on the first recording session was amazing. They were like, how is it possible that we did not know this, such a beautiful music existed? And. Um, we uh, then uh, this uh, CD was one of those uh, best um, reviewed in almost all professional uh, magazines everywhere. They gave it a uh, highest rate, and uh, the reaction was the same. It's something treasure which we did we were not aware about, and it was even the highlight of the year in Germany. So they have a, it, it made a little bit different, it, it, a little bit easier to convinced organizer now to put Ukrainian music in, uh, in their repertoire. So last year, probably, I, I played a lot of Ukrainian music in all my concerts. But it's, of course, like a small step. And um, if it's my dream, if we find financing, we are going to present the music. Because here we concentrated on uh, Ukrainian National Romantic School. And all the composers who lived during the period which was probably the most tragic in Ukrainian history. But Ukrainian musical history is older than that. And um, that's why I, I as I told you, if we will find financing, so our next project will be with music from Baroque and classical period. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to start this concert with a composer which is not in this project and in this CD, because of, it did not fit, fit stylistically, but, um, He's a um, very important composer for Ukraine. He's usually very often uh, called Ukrainian Mozart. Mm -hmm. And it's not only because of the style of music stylistically, it's the same period, it, it, uh, very similar in style, but it's also of uh, biographical similarity. It, he was a child prodigy as Mozart, and probably if he would be born two centimeters on the left on the map, he would have another life. Um, he was a member of um, Bologna Musical Academy, which was the highest recognition a musician of that time could get, and he got it just a few months before Mozart. And there is even a funny story which I read somewhere that professors told to Mozart that if you will work 
hard enough, you probably can become as resourceful. We don't know if it's true, but we like it anyway. <laughs> and um, then he, of course, is not so well researched as Mozart. He died in his very uh, early in his early thirties, and we don't know so much about his uh, death. Um, but one of the theory is that when he came back from Italy to Russian court, he got depressed and took his life. What is really very tragic, I think, that we don't have so much music left uh, of him, and some beautiful choir works. But instrumental music, there are only two pieces which are edited. One is a um, beautiful violin sonata, and for some years ago they found a symphony, because before this, Borknyansky, another composer Ukrainian uh, from Baroque period, considered to be the first to write Ukrainian symphony, but now we know it's Maxim Berezovsky, and that's it, more or less. So this sonata, which I'm going to play, it was just found some years ago in, uh, in Krakow, um, in library, and it exists only in manuscript, it's not edited. That's why it's rather a unique occasion, because I'm sure you did not hear it, <laughs> and uh, nobody played, because it's not edited. And uh, it's a, it calls sonata, but it's of course not like Beethoven's sonata. It's uh, mostly you can think that he was inspired by Scarlatti sonatas, <coughs> which is natural. He was studying in Italy, and Scarlatti was the biggest uh, name during that time. And I think it's a very sweet piece, which is uh, written for cembalo, so we can imagine how it sounds. <coughs>
to this movie, especially uh, a lot of Mikola Lysenko. He was the father of Ukrainian music. And I just want to tell some words about the piece I'm going to play. It's one of the most popular pieces of Ukrainian music. It's very often played. And uh, Lysenko studied in Germany, so he uh, definitely was uh, uh, influenced by the biggest name of that time, Ferenc Liszt. And we know uh, Ferenc Liszt wrote his Hungarian Rhapsody, which were very popular at that time. And uh, it's, of course, very much um, influenced, especially about the structure. Uh, you have this second part, which is mostly very difficult to play. And this also is very difficult to play, but Lysenko was a very good uh, pianist by himself. He made his living as a pianist in Germany. And uh, the first part is um, almost um, imitation of um, songs of uh, Ukrainian Kobzars, uh, which is which calls Dunka, so Dunka Shunka.
you already know by now that Kosenko is one of my favorite composers and that he did not write any symphony of the war. He, his talent mostly came uh, best in, in uh, small lyrical pieces. And he was very much in love with his wife, Angelina. Alina. No, Angelina, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, he dedicated to her most of his work, small lyrical pieces. And this uh, piece, Consolation, which we uh, choose uh, to name the project after, uh, after uh, uh, his small piece, which already you know that it's in major and not in minor, which is one of the really, really few um, pieces in Ukrainian music, and uh, which has some kind of hopeful, and he dedicated it to his wife, Angelina. And um, first, before this, I will play another piece, which has a very humble name, Study in F, F sharp minor. And of course, this music is much more than just study. But on the other hand, uh, Chopinox also <coughs> named his masterpieces by study. So Kosenko, first study and then consultation.
for Rebuski, or maybe pity for Ukraine, because <coughs> Ukraine really could have equivalent to Rachmaninov in Russia. He, he had such a potential which never really grew to, be, to, to what it could be. Uh, he, you know that his brother was killed by KGB and he was trying to equilibrate actually in this uh, very strange society which he lived and I know if we can judge him for that. Um, he has a beautiful piano sonata, which is on the first opus, and uh, uh, these two preludes, which I uh, choose today, is also his uh, one of his earlier opus, it's opus seven and opus four, and you really can hear what it could be, um, and this was, I think, one of those of the most uh, beautiful example of uh, post-romantic period.
first thing with the next composers is in this movie. I don't remember actually, but um, he is very special for me because he's from the same area where I am from, and he was a professor in the same academy where I studied in Lviv. And if we draw parallel, because we were talking about Berezovsky uh, as a Mozart and uh, Lysenko as a Liszt and, and uh, Rebutsky as Rachmaninoff, so it's definitely, if, if we want to make parallel to those well-known um, composers, it's Bartok. Uh, he absolutely based his, uh, all his works on uh, Ukrainian folk melodies from the region, uh, which probably preserved um, best his uh, folklore people preserved his folklore better than uh, other uh, people in, in other parts in Ukraine. Um, it's um, people who live in the mountain, and uh, he really uh, was like their voice. He used their uh, melodies, and those three pieces, Kolomeiki, which most of you know, Kolomeiki is a dance, but it means circle. And it's not only because you dance it in a circle, it's also um, all the time coming the same melody over and over again. Uh, but in this Kolomeik, it's much more than just dance. In this um, slowly part, you can hear the imitation of uh, wind instrument, trembita. You can hear um, the mood of this beautiful nature. And uh, it's also very well known pieces in Ukraine, so three Ukrainian dance colonies. <coughs>
haven't seen the channel before. And it's a very popular piece. If you look on iTunes, YouTube, and uh, Spotify, it's uh, uh, most viewed among all the pieces on this um, uh, CD. But the thing is, he did not write much more. He just wrote this to Kaka, and we are very thankful for that. Uh, if you need some kind of preparation of piano to that, to make the repetition lighter, but I thought it would be very uh, sad to, to do something with that beautiful piano, so I will do my best. <laughs> and um, the, the perfect person you can hear on CD. So I can't be mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. actually it calls Hutsulska Tokata, which means that Tokata from this mm -hmm. region in the west uh, uh, part of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 